I'm David Garcia. I'm a hematologist, uh, professor of medicine at the University of Washington in Seattle. Dr. Garcia studies developments in direct oral anticoagulants. Here, he will discuss the use of these agents in cancer patients who develop blood clots. I think one of the most exciting uh, developments is what we're learning about so-called direct oral anticoagulants and how they might be able to be used in patients with cancer. Patients with cancer who develop blood clots have up until now needed to be treated with injectable anticoagulant therapy called low molecular weight heparins. This is a very burdensome treatment to patients because giving yourself a shot once or twice a day is not only going to cramp your lifestyle and be uncomfortable but can be financially quite taxing. Direct oral anticoagulants have been developed recently as an alternative to warfarin or Coumadin for the treatment of patients with all sorts of blood clots, but they hadn't really been well studied in cancer patients. And at this year's ASH meeting, we heard a couple of really important presentations, uh, randomized controlled comparisons of these direct oral anticoagulants to the injectable standard therapy low molecular weight heparin for the treatment of cancer-associated thrombosis. The SELECT-D study, which compared rivaroxaban to daltaparin for the treatment of cancer-associated thrombosis, and then the larger so-called Hokusai VTE cancer study, which compared edoxaban, an oral factor 10A inhibitor, to daltaparin for patients with cancer-associated thrombosis. I think what's interesting about these two studies is their design is remarkably similar. Um, they both are putting a direct oral anticoagulant against the standard low molecular weight heparin, and their findings are also remarkably similar in terms of relative safety and efficacy. The top-line findings are that both oral anticoagulants that were studied, one involving rivaroxaban and the other involving edoxaban, were at least as effective and perhaps more effective at preventing recurrent thrombosis than the standard therapy daltaparin. In both trials, there was a signal that the direct oral anticoagulant may cause slightly more major bleeding, and in particular gastrointestinal bleeding, than the standard daltaparin therapy. But I think that when oncologists and patients weigh all of the pros and cons and look at the small uh, uh, safety difference in, in the big picture, my sense is this is going to change practice overnight because when we offer a patient the opportunity to take an oral medication rather than an injectable one uh, with better efficacy and perhaps slightly less safety, I think it's a no-brainer. There may be some subpopulations of patients where continuing to use the injections makes more sense or is preferable and I think we'll need ongoing uh, secondary analyses of the data from these trials to better sort out how to individualize or tailor specific treatment to patients but I do think that that these new randomized controlled comparisons of the direct oral agents to low molecular weight heparin in cancer are going to change practice pretty quickly. There are more comparisons coming in the future, but I think we have uh, enough information now to really begin to have detailed conversations with patients about the risks and benefits of the different therapies and incorporate their preferences into these important clinical decisions. Uh, I think we will see guidelines incorporate this information fairly soon. and. I think that practicing oncologists and hematologists should be aware that, that this new important trial information is, is available.